Okay, so my friend Don, you please share uh, the facts or what happened regarding them denying you services and supposedly they, uh, you know, it's not like they're lying, right? Saying that you didn't want services when you really uh, did. I thought you wanted me to start from the beginning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll focus on the eviction right now. The eviction. Uh, yeah. The eviction, what it, what it is, is um, there was a deadline for us to move out on 31st. Okay? Yeah. So there was efforts that the staff made to talk with their clients mm -hmm. to uh, to make plans. Yeah. To, to see what what was needed for his housing, what was what was uh, was acceptable for the yeah. client, and, yeah. and so forth and on. Well, I said that I did not want to go to a board and care. Yeah. Didn't want to go to, to a boarding care if if I was to if a boarding care was my only option I would stay in the street was my statement to my counselor. Mm. She took that to mean that I wanted to stay in the street, mm. saying that you know, I have a, a significant other and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We want to stay together. Yeah, can't do that in a boarding care. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I said that I, I don't. You know that's what I I I, I, I declined. Yeah. Now that was the initial conversation. That was over a month ago. Yeah. Now here it is. Uh, a couple of weeks later, mm -hmm. she says, "So you don't want services?" And I says, "Well, yes, I do." And then a couple of weeks later again, she says, "Well, uh, down here, I, I I don't know uh, what you're gonna do. You know, since that you don't want our services." I says, "Wait a minute. Let me make this clear." And I believe I made it very clear mm -hmm. on what I said, what I meant, and how I meant it. Yeah. Now with that clarity, the other day, her supervisor tells me, well, I understand that you don't want our services. <laughs> how do you say to a person, I do want your services, not that, not boarding care. Yeah. But anything else. Yeah. You know, and right yeah. now, I uh, I was just talking to a lady right now. She says, "Remember, we care about you. We we love you. We take care of you." Well, not really. Not really, because my case manager, when we met, I told her that you know we, we had a good. We built. She built good rapport. We built good rapport, and we had that. Yeah. And I, I said to her that uh, with this conversation, I am inspired. And I says, I want to write something. And I wrote her a note and I told her specifically not to share the information that I was given to her mm -hmm. with anyone. Yeah. Client, you know. Yeah. So I give it to her and then. Uh, Actually, I had to put it in an envelope, and I couldn't. I didn't put it in her hand. Yeah. But when she received it, she immediately showed my note to her supervisor. Oh. And then when we met again, she says, "Well, I shared it with Alex, and he just he just really uh, supports everything you do." Did you just forget that I told you not to share with anyone? So from that point, she's nice, she's uh, all of that, but from that point, I did trust level very low. Sure. That lady was just here? No. Oh, a different was, one. That was not okay. my case. Before. Okay. But yeah. since then, uh, it's been one thing, it's, it's been real simple. I come here, I get cards. That's it. No big deal. Like the food card you're the talking food about? Cards, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no big deal. So you, you haven't know. been staying here lately? I haven't been staying here since I was uh, kicked out for excessive property. Oh, really? Or wow. using, yeah, well, anyway. Hmm. There was an adjacent room to me that was vacated by the previous tenants. Previous tenant friend of mine asked me to get a couple of things out of her room. Mm -hmm. She left her room unlocked. I kept it unlocked. And after I got her things to her, I used it for storage because I did not have enough room yeah. in my room to lay down 
Only only place I could lay down in that room was in the in the tub. Mm. I had four bikes in the bathroom. Mm. I had too much property. They had a, a, a larger room available. Yeah. They had storage available, but they didn't give it to me. And you're, you're doing a bike repair, right? Uh, they call me the bike man. Yeah. yeah. And I had in that hotel room mm -hmm. over, I had a lot of stuff. Yeah. Period. And I couldn't move. Yeah. Couldn't move around. Couldn't, couldn't do anything. I had a bike and they wanted me to put every all my property inside the room. I had yeah. a bike that I had to leave outside because I couldn't fit my bike inside the room. I got it. I slept yeah. in a chair. Wow. So they care about me, but they won't provide adequate living arrangements. It's hard to keep your, your little business that you had going without enough room, of course, right? So. Well, thanks to the uh, Anaheim Police Department, I uh, I have free storage. Oh, oh, there, yeah, got it. Yeah. <laughs> For what, 90 days or 60 Na 90 days? 90 days, yeah. 90 days of free storage. Yeah, yeah. My girlfriend she says, why are you carrying all this stuff with you? Why are you going to pick up, you know, the other things that you have over there? Yeah. I says, because they're going to take me to jail. Yeah, yeah. And when they do, I want to make sure I have everything with me. And the charge was storage of property or what? It was um, excessive storage. Yeah, storage, yeah. Excess, excessive storage. Yeah. yeah. So I played that. So uh, now I just set an appointment and get this stuff moved out. And I believe I have a, I'm actually going to check on the place right now. I was yeah. told earlier today about a location for large enough to, to handle my bikes. Yeah. It's three truckloads. You got three truckloads of bikes? And bike parts. Wow. That's a lot. You know who helped me move here to the, uh, to the Baymont? I moved here from Maine and Catella. Mm -hmm. That's in Santa Ana. Yeah. The, it, well, it was actually, that's the city of Orange because it was the Orange Police Department they have a little uh, SUV truck. Was it like a truck? Yeah. They brought 30 bike frames over here for me. Oh wow. Yeah. They brought it here? Yeah. Really? The police. Wow. Two police officers brought. Amazing. 30 bikes over here for me. Oh, that's I, pretty cool. I've uh, I've been I'm I'm known for helping people with transportation and bikes. And yeah. The police. Well, they, it'd be nice if the city could do more to help you get something going, keep it going. Instead of yeah. uh, forcing you to shuffle around, lose stuff, and because if you're, it's not like you're doing something positive in the community, helping people out, so they, you know, should be helping, to help you build that. Those words you just spoke was spoken by a police officer here in Anaheim. Wow! Right before I spoke to the homeless outreach team. I took your stuff. The homeless outreach <laughs> team was who put me in jail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the police officer prior to, he says, they gave you a ticket? Let me see that thing. He, gave, he, he says, go to court and fight this. Yeah. So one police officer says, fight it. But the homeless outreach team, take them to jail. Wow. Well, unbelievable. I'm so glad they did take me to jail because it was a lot of stuff that I was hauling around. Yeah. Trying to protect and yeah. I lost a lot of a lot of stuff when that happened, but Yeah. And I just lost about a hundred tires. Oh yeah? Wow. Twenty bikes. Uh let me see. So uh, twenty bikes, about a, a, a stack of tires this high, mm -hmm. gone. Rims, about sixty or seventy rims, gone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh thirty or forty inner tubes. Mm. You know, that's a that's a that's a significant loss for a homeless person. Yeah. Now, because I lost that, I got to get my stuff out of the police department. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. You know, because yeah. the police got a bunch of my stuff. Wow. They got they ha they have a generator. I really do need because it's difficult to keep my phone charged. Yeah. Now, the organization you are representing is a Christian. Yeah. Homeless Advocates for Christ. Homeless Advocates for Christ. Did I give you a card? No. Yeah. No, because uh, my thing is, even though I focus for homeless people, I focus on bicycles. Yeah. 
That's my YouTube channel, Facebook, home, and all the email and my number too. So. I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna share. I wanna. Okay, so this is your Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then this is your email. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna email you some information on the other things that I, I do besides bikes. I'm oh, good. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. I share the word edify. Yeah. I've traveled the country and realized and talked to a lot of people. Yeah. Realized Edify is known by only a small percentage of the population. Yeah. And we are to have edifying conversations, so says God. Yeah. That's says, good. Have ed he says, when you speak to one that have edifying conversations. Yeah. The to, to do that, you must know what the word edify means. Yeah. Edify is to speak or teach in a manner that uplifts the moral character of a person. That's good, man. I like that. So if we spoke good things yeah. of one another, yeah, yeah. and the only thing you heard me say of you is wonderful things, so how could you so ever be my enemy? Yeah. 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 yeah, well, ultimately we gotta lift each other up, encourage each other in the Lord, right? That's what God wants. That is is that that, that yeah. is our job. That's, yeah. our, that's the assignment. That's mm -hmm. the mission. That's the... That's the uh, Where are you? There you are. I, I have a special suit that's, for you. That's the roots of it all. Yeah. So you can yeah. yeah. That's, that's the base. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And then we also are supposed to share the goodness of God, what God has done. That's right. A lot of people say is uh, belief is increased by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing of the word. Yeah, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, it says. So yeah, we share the word and increases people's faith, right? That's, uh, it increases my faith when I study the scriptures and I'm encouraged by some of the things in there, you know? That's right. That's it gives right. you a stronger faith to trust the Lord no matter what comes. Right. Right. That's what it comes down to is He wants us to trust Him. Right. Through every tribulation, every trial. I'm about to be uh, on the streets myself, possibly, by uh, this uh, weekend, so yeah. Says, but I trust the Lord, you know. It says, count it all joy. That's right. When you go through your various trials and tribulations. That's right. Because your trials and tribulations perfects your patience. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah, this is my whole mission that I've been here, that I've lived in California. Yeah. Is to share biblical knowledge mm -hmm. outside of a church format. Well, that's important. That's why I do street preaching too. Yeah, that's that's what we got to do. Go out to the streets, the highways, and the byways. Compel them to come in. He says, right? Yes. Yeah, street, <laughs> street preaching is one thing, yeah. but living by example is another. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not one or the other. You want to try to do both. Because here it is. I went to. I've been to jail. Yeah. Four times, mm -hmm. counting the three times I was arrested in uh, uh, Santa Ana mm -hmm. for listen excessive property. <laughs> For having too many bikes and too many bike parts, and, and here it is, I lost, well, just lost, and I still have storage somewhere. Okay, now, I got a bunch. Now, didn't realize how much. Yeah. God says, you know, um, seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all of, all of its righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Says that if you honor, you know, uh, trust in him and give 10% of your tithes, he will pour all the best and that you don't have room to receive. Here it was at the time, I did not uh, get any type of income. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get G GR. I think I did get food stamps at the time. But when I first went to jail, no income and yeah. I worked for free. Yeah. Work for free, no income, but I went to jail for having too much stuff. The only way that's possible is through business of God. And that demonstrated in a homeless situation, trusting in God, all things will happen for you without even. You know what I have as a trainer? Something that I asked for, a gurney, mm. a gurney, mm -hmm. you know, because in the riverbed I had two of them. Yeah. And I, and I wanted a gurney. Yeah. And I have one. It arrived yesterday. It was delivered by a lady. And what she wanted for payment was a soda. Wow. That's good. 
that's nice. <laughs> a soda. That's awesome. I'm gonna wrap this up because it's getting kind of a long yeah, video, yeah. but thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk more. We will, Joshua. I'm gonna wrap this up real quick. Uh, uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah, man. Hope I can do more one day. So, so that's uh, our friend Don here. Please uh, share the video. Pray for Don and you and others on the streets. They need help and uh, hopefully help him get his business going. But uh, we got a lot of good things happening with his bike, bike, you know, situation. He can get that going and have a place to put his bikes and work on bikes and you know help people with in need of bikes and fix bikes and a lot of homeless people especially need something like that. So, uh, anyways, um, do join homeless advocates for Christ. Thanks so much for your prayers and support. May God bless you as you seek first His kingdom always. Bye -bye.